Gambler Nation, welcome into the Sports Locker Satellite Show, the Short Locker out here in St. Louis, day one of Arch Madness, the inaugural Arch Madness that the Ramblers will be involved in, and boy was there some madness today. I'm Joe Flaherty, joined by Nick Amatangelo, but before we get to anything involving Loyola, there was a game that we have to talk about first between Evansville and the Drake Bulldogs. Let's go to the highlights. And the madness begins with number nine, Evansville, at number eight, Drake. Purple Aces bringing the Valley's leading scorer, DJ Ballantine, but it was senior guard Richard Carter who was playing the role of leading scorer early for the Bulldogs. He poured in nine of Drake's first 12 points and route to a six point lead early on. And here was Carter hitting one of three of the three three point field goals he took on the night. But you didn't think Ballantine would stay quiet, did you? It's three here, key to 14 and nothing run by the Purple Aces. Capped off by this and one coming up by Jalen Brown. Evansville takes a commanding 39 28 lead into half. Ballantine led all scores with 16. Drake started out the second half much like they did the first. Carter with the smooth dribble drive here as part of an 8 0 run to cut Drake's deficit to 6. But there goes that man again, Ballantine. Aries yeah, hitting the turnaround. And that's the same move that killed Loyola. Defensively, the Aces get a huge effort from Egidigis Makavikius, who set a tournament record 8 blocks. Ballantine finishes night with 30 points as the Aces live to fight another day. They win 69-61. Makaviki has finished two blocks shy of a triple-double. All right, so Nick, this was really a tale of two matchups. You got the guard play, two really good guards going at it, and the center play, one really good center, and one show, not really showing up tonight. Yeah, absolutely. For the guards, it was all about DJ Ballantine right. for Evansville. He was just electric. He missed. He actually missed his first four shots. Came out of the gates really slow. But then he started to pick it up. Made a couple of free throws that started to build his confidence. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he was just lights out. End of the day, 30 points. Hard to argue against that. On the other side, it's kind of the opposite with Carter. Richard Carter from Drake Bulldogs. He came out of the gate really hot. Yeah, he did. He made nine points in the first five or so minutes. Uh, but then he really didn't do much the rest of the first half. Right. Yeah, he finished the game with 26 points, but a lot of that was once the game was out of hand, once Evansville had kind of built up a sizable lead and they were just trying to come back. So, like, he got some points, but it wasn't, like, crucial minutes that he was logging there at the end there. Yeah, in both, ha in both halves, uh, Dre came out on a bit of a run. In the, fir in the first half, it was 12-6. Second half, it there was an 8-0 run really early in there somewhere. Yeah. He keyed off a lot of that, but... There was a bit of a lull in between there. And also, going back to Ballantine, he, he finished 11 for 13 from the free throw line. And that just Huge. that speaks to not only was his shot falling, but he was getting into the paint. And in the first half, they, they owned a 10-point advantage. Evansville, that is, owned a 10-point advantage in points in the paint. Absolutely. And now that's what the guard play, but what about the center play? Now, the center play, it was night and day. Right. Uh, Makovicius for There's a Evansville. There's for you. Total <laughs> tough name, but Makovicius was just... Absolutely stunning. Yeah. He was two blocks away from a triple double. Mm -hmm. He set an MVC tournament record for blocks with, with those eight, eight. Yeah. shattering the old record of six. Shattering. Yeah. It, blocks are hard to come, that's come true. by. So when you, that win, is true. when you get two blocks, that's pretty big to a me. A very quiet 19 points. Yeah, 19 points. Uh, I, I mean, the, the star of the show was Ballantine, mm. but. Makovicius was a great supporting cast member. And it's no, it's no surprise coming from Ballantine because he is the NBC's leading scorer, the Absolutely. team's leading scorer, but then you got a guy, a supporting role like this stepping up that's pretty huge. Right. Now what about the center for Drake? It, well, Seth Van Deest, senior, Drake Bulldog. This is probably not the way he wanted his college career to end. He finished the night 0 for 2, 1 for 2 from the, the charity stripe, you know, 1 point on the night and 8 rebounds. That's not exactly a stellar performance. They, he was out-rebounded, out-classed the entire way by Makovicius. There was just nothing he could do against it. Um, but so Evansville will move on. They play Wichita State Shockers. Yeah. Now, Evansville had a 15-point lead on the Shockers early on in one of their earlier matchups this season, but they let that slip away. 
uh, if Evansville wants to hold with Wichita this time around, they got to get better from the three. They're only two of 11 tonight yeah. from beyond the arc, so that they got to get better from that. If, Absolutely. And the rest of the team needs to play up to the level that Makovicius and Valentin, Valentin played. Right, that's what they were talking about in their press conference. They're youthful, there's no seniors on this roster, they just want to believe in themselves and they think they could probably do it against Wichita State tomorrow. We'll see how that pans out, but we definitely saw how Loyola's <laughs> inaugural game panned out today. And Evansville Drake was a pretty good game, yeah. but it had nothing on what the Ramblers were able to put together tonight. After scoring only 38 points in their last meeting with Bradley, the Ramblers hung 43 points on the seventh seeded Braves in the first half alone. But in the second, it was Bradley's seniors fighting to keep their careers alive. Tyshawn Pickett dominated all night, racking up 25 to lead all scores. Walt Lemon Jr. with that steal and slam shaved Loyola's lead to just two. But then it was time for the Milton Doyle show. The NBC Newcomer of the Year scored 11 points within the final five minutes for the Ramblers, including this nifty lefty layup spinning through the lane. On the other end, Lemon Jr. thinks he gets the layup and one, but no, it gets waved off. He'll nail his two free throws, leaving Loyola down one with just 4.8 to play. Loyola needs a savior, and his name is Milton Doyle. The buzzer beater gives Loyola their first postseason victory since 2008. And guess who? Milton Doyle led all Ramblers with 19 points on the night. None bigger than those final three. Here now with Joaquin Carrig, the beat writer for the men's basketball team for the Little Phoenix, and uh, welcome to the madness. <laughs> Tell you, man, right? that was that was unreal. I mean, when that shot went in and the crowd going crazy, I mean, it was a pretty epic moment for Loyola basketball. I mean, and welcome, like you said, welcome to St. Louis, welcome yeah. to Arch Madness. First impressions last. And I tell you, Milton Doyle showed up in that last four minutes. Hey, I mean, dude. he had a difficult spinning uh, layup that he got to the rim basically in one step after his spin move. He had a tough jump, like mid-range 18-foot jump shot. He had two free throws. I mean, he was there when Loyola needed him at the end of this game. Right. And I, the, I mean, it's un simply enough said that they wouldn't have won the game without Milton Doyle at the right. end. Right. But it's also fair to say that um, Bradley might not have been in it all the way up until the end if we didn't see a little bit different of a Doyle in, in the beginning yeah, of the second half. Yeah, I tell you what, yeah, beginning of the second half to about five minutes left to go, Milton Doyle was was struggling. I, I, feel like, I felt like the game was a little overwhelming for him at times. He was taking questionable shots. Um, but not only that, Jordan, or not Jordan Pickett, what's his name? Tyshawn. Um, Tyshawn, Tyshawn Pickett was a man on a mission tonight. I mean, that guy's a big bad, guy, yes, he and is. he was, every time it seemed like Loyola was starting to pull away, he had a big clutch layup. Mm -hmm. He even hit a three today, I think, from yep. behind the arc, and he's not a typically three-point shooter. Nope. And he finished, what, with uh, 26? He finished with 25. 25 he played all 40 points. minutes. That's an NBA yeah. body right there. Yeah, that's an NBA body, and he kept them in this game. Um, but I tell you what, that first half of basketball that Loyola played was probably some of the best basketball I've seen all season from them. And they absolutely fed off the, the fan section that was there. <sighs> I mean, where has that been all season? I mean, that was, that was, it was electric. It, it was, was electric. I mean, the earlier game I would compare that to this year was Wichita State, mm -hmm. where, I mean, even though we lost, I mean, that was a huge turnout at, at the uh, Gentile. But, um, like I said, the first half, Turk, Devin Turk and Jeff White were just not missing. I mean, we were six of eight from, the, uh, from th behind the arc in the first in half. In the first half alone, yeah. Devin Turk led scores, all, led all scores for the Ramblers <laughs> in the first half. Jeff White had some ankle-breaking moves. I mean, oh, the, the offense was clicking on all cylinders. I mean, it was, it was quality basketball, and it was very exciting to see. It really was. I mean, and, and that's all good and well for Loyola, which is absolutely superlative as their, their first showing yeah. in this tournament. But yeah. then you also look at there's you know, a Chicago native in Lemon Jr., on this Bradley squad, mm -hmm. has to exit like that. That's got to yeah, be rough. That has to be tough. I mean, he said in the press game conference, I mean, he, it was, his words couldn't describe That's what was going through his mind. Um, and, I mean, he played his heart out, too. He finished with 24, I believe. He did. Um, and to go out like that, the last game on that last second shot, that's just got to be a gut-wrenching play from the lowest on. of the lows for mm -hmm. Bradley to the highest of the highs Loyola is playing again tomorrow yes, they got a they 6 p.m. date with ISU mm -hmm. Illinois State or Indiana State excuse mm -hmm. me what is Loyola's quickly what, what well, are their keys to success and this has been 
all season long. This has been the, the crucial component to them winning games all season long, and that is limiting turnovers right. and hitting their free throws. The, they, they shoot 69% from the free throw line this season. Very bad number <laughs> from the free throw line. They hit 75% of their free throws tonight. They, they need to do at least that again next game, and they need to m- minimize their turnovers because that has been, I guarantee you, the, the re- main reason for all of their losses. They've been in almost all of the games they've played this year. Right. That has been the main reason why they've lost the games. So minimize turnovers, hit the free throws, and we could see ourselves going a, lo- a little bit further into right. the – one tournament than we expected. Won the turnover battle today as well, so that's always crucial. And even our, our first half, the, the first half output from Loyola today was five points greater than their entire game output against Bradley, the, the entire last matchup. Yeah. So the, this, the offense could be in flux. So hopefully we see a better incarnation, a continued incarnation of the offense we saw today, tomorrow against Indiana State. Good things to come if that happens. I'll Absolutely. tell you that yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree there. And there are three other games on the docket as well. Starting at noon, it's going to be Wichita State against Evansville. The Purple Aces, what do you, I mean, everyone is coming out to this More tournament. Balantine, I'm telling you right now. More Balantine, that's what you're going to see. That's what, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what you kind of have to see. Yeah. And, the, and the big they body in the win. middle. Yeah. There has to be a little bit of play there. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's the number two team in the nation. That's what everyone's here to see. So we're going to see how they look in their first time out in the tournament tomorrow. Uh, right after that at 2.30, it's Illinois State, Missouri State, then the Loyola game at 6 o'clock, then the nightcap, 8.30, it's going to be Northern Iowa and Southern Illinois, and then we'll be right back here to recap all of it in beautiful St. Louis tomorrow night. But for tonight, I'm Joe Flaherty, Joaquin Carrig, and for Nick Amatangelo, this has been The Short Locker. We'll see you tomorrow.